Muy buenas tardes a todos y todas. Eh, de ahí por, por, de, inicia la audiencia en el caso 12.895 del señor José Tulio Carrillo. 12.895, José Tulio Carrillo. My name is Julissa Mantilla. I'm the first vice president of the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights. Together with me, our commissioner, Fiabra Podestán, that is the second vice president of the commission. Commissioner May, uh, Margaret May Macaulay and Commissioner Esmeralda Rosemena are also here. She is the country rapporteur. Today, we also have the um, Executive Secretary for Cases and Petitions and the team of the Executive Secretariat. I would like to greet the delegation of the state and the representatives of the petitioner. And I would like to give the floor to the Marisol Blanchard to give the indications and instructions for this case. Thank you, President. This case is related to the alleged responsibility of the state of Guatemala for the uh, installation in the alleged victim of a substation of police without authorization and without no contract. Uh, the lack of a legal decision and the lack of access to legal protection. It has been persecution against him because of this situation. On, 19, the Mar on March 19, 2013, the commission uh, issued the admissibility report, 713, finding the case admission for the purpose of examining violations of articles 8.1, 21, and 25 of the American Convention. On April the 8th, 2013, the petition submitted its additional observation on the merits, which were, which were sent to the state on June 18th on the same year, on July. And this hearing is aimed at uh, receiving information regarding the current situation of the case. We also will have the statements of the alleged victim and from an expert. Thank you, President. Thank you, Secretary. I would like to say also that you have been instructed regarding the time. We have a clock here, a timer that will let you know the time that you have, we will have also interpretation and we have also subtitles for the public. For the, We will start with uh, the statement of Mr. Tulio Carrillo Hernandez. I will ask him to indicate his full name, his uh, place of birth and his place of residence. Mr. Carrillo, you are muted. Mr. Carrillo, would you mind uh, turning on your mic? You're muted. Now you can start. Good afternoon to the commissioners, especially you that are acting as president. My name is Jose Tulio Carrillo Hernandez. I'm from Ususan, Mitajuriapa, and I was, that is my ID number. Mr. Carrillo, we will start your statement based on the questions of the petitioner. We would like to identify, and you will have 10 minutes for this part. I would like to repeat, my name is Jose Tulio Carrillo Hernandez. I already gave my ID number. And now we will start the questions for 10 minutes on your statement. In the 90s, I had two daughters, Dalila and Maria Elena Carrilla Roca, that are also the daughters of Maria Elena Roca Palencia and myself. They were turning 15, and I asked them that we were going to sell a part of a lot in order to celebrate their 15th birthday. When I went to the property registry, I was not allowed to see the book. I had to call a lawyer from the capital, but he was also a lawyer somewhere else. And they showed him the book and the uh, sheet uh, regarding the property was not there. So uh, the lawyer was shown the book, but we saw that the book was damaged. And we talked with the head of the registry office and they agreed that the book would be uh, repaired. But 
they didn't want to repair the book and they add a number to the uh, book number because the number of the book was a different one. And then uh, the public prosecutor office uh, accused me of uh, forgery. And they told me that my deed was null. And they, the problem is that the deed was okay. I did not change my ID until I was named as auxiliary mayor. So I stopped using that ID number. Thank you. Very good, Mr. Carrillo. I don't know if the petitioners has the specific questions or if they have, because we only have you three minutes. That's all, Madam President, that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, commissioners. This representation has questions for the petitioner, Mr. Jose Tulio. Please inform to the members of the commission when you started with the complaint regarding the property. In 1996, where, when my daughters were turning 15. And in concrete way, did you forge any of the deeds? No. Please be clear. Have you forged any of the deeds? No, sir. You mentioned that at the beginning, someone talked about your ID number. What are you talking about when you talk about your ID number? The prosecutor uh, that, whose name was Lima, uh, what this he said regarding your ID number, he told me that the deed number was not okay, that it was did not belong to me. Was that uh, written in a document with that uh, ID number, the deeds were prepared. When you bought the property of your father-in-law, did he show you where your property was located? My father-in-law, Don Rogelio Roca Estado, showed me the demarcation of the lot. Um, because of your complaint, did you were, were you persecuted? Up to now, the public prosecutor office accuses me and um, follows me all the time. When you uh, presented a claim to the property and you requested that the book was repaired and you said that that was very difficult for you, do you know whether the state made a pronouncement against that petition. The only thing that I know is that the prosecutor and the head of the property registry presented a complaint that was not investigated. I don't know where he presented it. Were you responsible for the damaging of the books? No, sir, as I said, the book was there and we went to check it. And when I wanted to have a certificate, and certification, a certificate to sell my property, the book was damaged. Why the National Civil Police was at your property? They were there without authorization. That's of public knowledge. They took property of the property. They say that it belonged to the state, but it never belonged to the state. That those lots never belong to the states and they will never be owned by the states. But how do you know, do you know how they get there? They were on the street. They were working on the streets. And after that, they took property of the lot. Have you been able to talk with the authorities so that your property was vacated? Yes, several times, but they lied to me. They said that they were going to negotiate, but 
Uh, Mr. Ponce died and passed away, so he cannot be a witness today, but they never paid me for those lots. Mr. Jose Tulia. Uh, what were the consequences of this complaint for your family? That was the worst thing. My daughter was depressed. It was, uh, she's dead now because of that. My wife also is dead. And the only daughter that I have is just there. She's sad because she cannot even study. She's a nurse at a hospital, that's all. What she's doing. Don't worry, Mr. Tulio. It is important that the members of the commission know your situation and what you have been you have gone through all this time. When you decided to face all these proceedings, you did that with the support of your family. How many people are left? You said that your wife passed away. How did she die and why that is related? I only have my one daughter and my wife died because she died of sadness. Did she know? about the sale that your father-in-law did to you? Yes, she contributed with part of the money and I put the rest of the money and our father -in my father-in-law sold it. I have had the lot for over 20 years. Were you arrested because of this complaint? Yes, sir. They are, they tried and they are trying to see me behind bars because they say that I forged the deeds. Thank you, Mr. Tulio. Honorable commissioners, this uh, representation is finishing its questionnaire. Now I will give the floor to the representatives of the state. I will uh, indicate, I want you to indicate the names of those who will be asking the questions. Thank you all to all the members of the commission. My name is Jorge Donado. I'm representing the state of Guatemala. And I will be in charge of the questions to the alleged victim. Mr. I am Jose Tulio, not Marco Tulio. Sorry, Dr. Jose Tulio. My name is Donado. Sorry, Mr. Donado. Mr. Jose Tulio, you said that you have been arrested, that you were arrested for this situation to, that you are mentioning. Are you asking this to me? Yes. Officials tried to arrest me because the acting judge was on holidays. And so the fifth uh, court was on a hold. And thanks to Mr. Carlos Pop, I am free. But they tried to do it several times. There is a criminal proceeding that is still pending and that is against you. Yes. Do you have any measures for you? Yes. Sorry. Uh, a prosecutor. That measure was uh, taken by a substitute judge because the acting judge was not there, they make the most of that moment to issue that measure against me. But I'm still free and they are all the time appealing the decisions of the judge. I don't remember 
uh, the name. The name is Mr. Torres Funas. Thank you. Have you always been advised by a lawyer during the whole process proceeding because of this case? Yes, it's what I'm saying about the, the facts, the truth of the facts. Yes, but you have always been advised by a lawyer. Yes. And here is present. He is present here, Mr. Carlos Pop. And have you exerted or have you taken actions within the courts that have uh, managed this case related to your lands? Yes, I have gone to all hearings. I have appeared in all hearings. Have you promoted Amparo actions, Amparo rates within this case that is being that is pending in before court that can be clarified by my lawyer because he is present do you do, don't you do know that i know some of the cases because i work in the field i i work in the um, in the farm but I, and i don't have time but you have promoted rita fampado yes that's right how many have you promoted within this case I think that uh, the prosecution office have presented them, but you have not carried out any type of action then. My lawyer can explain that. Okay, thank you. Mr. Jose Tulio. Have you had the opportunity to go to the courts in Guatemala? Yes, every time I was cited. So you know, I was summoned. So you know that two public deeds were annulled, were vacated, and they initiate or they give rise to this problem that you have. What I know is that the Constitutional Court ordered the uh, police to the police to vacate my land my premises and mr bielma montes that was the minister of education opposed to that and until today they are there and do you know that your capture or your uh, detention is raised or is due to the fact that the prosecution assumes that there is uh, there are public deeds that were forged and that has not been solved. No, but Mr. Funes Torres is lying because I was the president of the honor court of the Association of Neighbors of my community. I was the witness of the board of uh, neighbors of my community and I was present in the courts. I was in the public prosecution before they wanted to send me to 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 jail and uh, they did not detain me it's i always i always was present in my community as auxiliary or a substitute um mayor and now my i i am in conflict with my neighbors because of what the pro public prosecution has made my neighbors love me Mister, thank you. So, you at any time did you get to know an ordinary proceedings of judicial businesses or deed which was identified as the case file zero one thousand forty four slash twenty fifteen? No, I don't know that. You have you haven't been notified as to that. Probably my lawyer. In the property, you make reference to that the one that you say you have. Have you had any part of that property of that premises? Have you have you disposed of them? Yes, in my colony not everyone are my friends there are maras that have come and have uh, that have forced me to sell a fraction of the lands and that is what they wanted to 
to to do and i haven't sold it i practically gave them so you have sold part of the land yes because of the the mareros came from el salvador and there are thousands of, of meters that have been taken away from me and have you denounced that yes but i as i have those problems they keep on threatening me if i report them mr jose tulio have you referred to the fact that there were two pages that were ripped from a book. You said that there were two pages from the registry of property. Not, I don't know how many because at that time, Ponce Valdez was my lawyer. I don't know how many pages were ripped off. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Jose Tulios. I have no further question or an commission. Thank you, God bless you. Okay. We are going to give the floor to the commissioners, to my colleagues, to see whether they have questions. We are going to start with the commissioner Esmeralda Rosemena, which is, who is the country reporter. Thank you, Madam President. Good afternoon, everybody. To the representation of the state of Guatemala, thank you for being here in this hearing. Thank you, Mr. Jose Tulio Carrillo. I would like to greet you especially, and I would like to acknowledge you for your strength and for being here with us today. I would like to express first, uh, I would like to have a clarification made by you, Mr. Carrillo. The police at some, at some point in history in your life, you, uh, you said that it was when your daughters turned 15, was near your land, it was on the streets, but at a specific point in time, the police took part of your land, of your premises, and installed in that lot of land that you, you say that belongs to you. You state that it belongs to you. So, can you tell the commission which part is it? Do you, did you identify it? Have you measured it? How is the police invading your premises, according to what you have mentioned? Can I answer? Yes. The police uh, were outside on the street. And I don't know how, but they started to take part of the land and they invaded one block and a half because then because first they have a little station and they, they install another one a bigger one and then they remained there and that space that slot of land that they occupied that belonged to your premises so that the institutional court the constitutional court said that it had to be returned to you are you living next to that area are you living next to that no i live in the terminal mayoreo so you are claiming the integrity of that of those premises that 
used to belong to you at that time it was registered under your name how do you see that measurement of the premises due to having acquired uh, through a purchase it had been registered in the property register how how do you assess that yes what happens is that they i have a plan and they created a new plan over my plan and they kept part of my premises and the claim that you are making through your lawyer through your attorney which is who is the attorney that manages your affair who can give an explanation on the proceedings but you have uh, there is a judgment on a court about that land so then why hasn't it been returned to you why do you think it hasn't been returned to you what according to the judgment was determined well at that time the president Berthier was present and the minister of interior was Vilma Montes but the president said the minister of interior to see how the things were so that they could return the premises so as to comply with the judgment of the constitutional court but he did not abide by the orders he believed he was absolute and he arrived to my colony and i was cited for i was summoned for a meeting and they were asking me questions and he never wanted to vacate the premise that is the exact version of the things he didn't obey laws he didn't obey the laws from the or the judgments as well thank you mr Pre madam president those are my questions thank you commissioner god blesses you i will ask commissioner piovesan whether she has questions Thank you, Madam President. I have two questions. I would also like to greet first the petitioner, Mr. Tulio. Tulio, yes, Jose Tulio, sorry. The representation of the state. Mr. Jose Tulio Carrillo Hernandez. Which are the facts that according to your evaluation or to assessment show that you are being persecuted by the state? Were there retaliation threats that you're facing as a result of the vindication of your property? Thank you. Yes, I have been persecuted by Bielman himself because he sent people from the, you know, the, the, the enforcement to, to investigate. I had to ask them uh, what they wanted. At that time, there were no telephones, there were no cell phones, so I could not record them and they wanted to eliminate physically. Thank you. I would like to ask Commissioner May McCauley whether she has questions for Mr. Carrillo. Um, thank you, Madam President. Um, I, I, I have a question for um, both uh, the state and, and the petitioner, um, because I really, um, uh, my my land law in the common law system is a little bit different from, from, from this that I'm hearing about. So I just wanted to clarify um, something which is based on our report. Um, and that is to ask um, if um, any steps have been taken after the commission's uh, admissibility report, and if so, what are those steps? 
and, um, and I hope I will be able to follow the sequence of such steps um, because um, I need, I, I hope that the expert will clarify if matters for me later on. So um, I will not trouble Mr. Trujillo um, with any questions now, but I will ask his lawyer if he can, what steps have been taken and definitely the state of um, Guatemala. And before I end, could I just say, I beg your pardon, I, um, I greet uh, the representatives of the state and um, the petitioner and his attorney and um, thank them for being with us. Thank, thank you. Could, could, yes, thank you. That's my question, only one. If I am not wrong, it's for the state's representative. Mr. Carrillo, I would like to thank you for your presence. We are going to go on with the declaration of Roberto Morales Gomez, the expert. Mr. Morales, are you there? Because I don't see you on the screen. I cannot identify you. I don't know if you're here. Madam President, he is not here. He might be entering the meeting, so we will be waiting for a few seconds. Madam President, in the meantime, to the state answer my question about what steps after the admissibility report they've taken. Yes, of course, maybe in the middle, I think that uh, while we wait for the expert, the state can answer the question. Thank you. I think that the expert is here, Commissioner. So since he's here, uh, we will continue with the first plan. We So maybe we will repeat the question later to the state, but now we will follow the plan that we have for the hearing. So we'll ask Mr. Morales to indicate his name, his place of birth and his place of residence. Your mic is muted, Mr. Morales. You are muted. Now it's okay. Good afternoon. My name is Roberto Gomez, Estuardo Gomez Morales. I'm from the city of Guatemala. I understand that you want my place of birth or my date of birth? Only your place of birth and your place of residence. That's it. Perfect. Mr. Morales, you will have 10 minutes to present your statement based on the questions that the petitioner will make you. And after that, you will have 10 minutes for the state and then we will continue with the questions of the commissioner. So I will give the floor to the petitioner now. Thank you. Uh, President, thank you, Commissioners. Mr. Gomez, uh, taking into consideration the case that we are addressing today with the Commission, I would like to know if you could evaluate the situation of the register of the property that is owned by Mr. Carrillo Hernandez. Which relevant aspects can you mention with regard to your expert report on this 
topics, everything that has to do with the property and the deeds of the property. Good afternoon. First, I see that this is a proceeding that started in August 1996. Uh, when the pages of the book were ripped off and the book contained the property deeds of Mr. Tullianan. And this is a practice that occurred frequently because these are big books and people use them a lot in order to check the situation of a specific property. And I understand that he started the proceeding because he was affected because of the situation. So he presented the request for the pages to be reestablished for the property because the main proprietor or owner was Figueroa Valle, that was the owner of the property 1452. So let's uh, think of that the person that was in charge of those pages was Mr. Jorge Macias. He was a very important justice at that time. He started a proceeding and before the public prosecutor office, he made measures to find a positive decision in four or five occasions. The public prosecution office did not provide the positive decision for that. And when after the, the proceeding for the ripping off of the pages of the book. And after that, we have two years later, a voluntary proceeding to request the, repos the uh, repair of those two pages so that those uh, property or well, that property was again uh, in the register. And after that, we have the appeals, we uh, trial, we have the civil proceeding promoted by the state of Guatemala. We can see the summary of the ruling from 2016. And we can consider, we can see there all the summary of all the legal proceedings and constitutional proceedings and all the writs of amparos promoted by Mr. Carrillo Hernandez between 1996 and 2020. I see a sequence of proceedings in the civil area. And apart from that, Mr. Jose Tulio, she, he was persecuted because of these proceedings. And also on top of that situation, we see that there were two administrative proceedings regarding how the state of Guatemala wants to take ownership of the properties by including them into the Guatemala's property register. Uh, it is the housing agency of Guatemala and requests a fraction of the lot, but that action was rejected. And then the property 169 of uh, the uh, book 2032 of Guatemala. In there, you can see that the property includes 25 properties of the states and all those properties or states from the state belong to the state after 1928. The oldest property is from then and the newest is from 1979. When you see the process of including the property 169, that is a property in question, then we have an area of uh, 502,000 square meters. There you can see that the add of all the property cover 
630,000 square meters. So the property taken by the state of Guatemala in 1999 is not the same because there is an additional area of 112 square meters and there are several uh, procedural failures. For example, the different procedures in order to integrate the property, there are some failures. Some, in some cases, there is no a completion of those procedures. And in most of the cases, most of the properties are from before 1934 when the National Proper Registry of Property has no support or the historical documents of the uh, demarcation of those properties do not have plans. And any person can make up the demarcation of that property. And if we see in the property, we see the summary of the property 169, that includes 19 pages of the book. What we can see in the analysis of that summary of the property, we can see that there are three irregular uh, documents on a, a same property. When there is a group of uh, properties that are together, so you should have only one document and a single owner. And in this case, it's not the state of Guatemala, but it's a nation when complying with an agreement of uh, 1944, 54, because all the properties of the nation or of the state should be registered on, uh, under the name of the state and not under the name of a ministry. There is a situation that we have here because in the book uh, property and of properties on the different books, we have properties that are under the name of different ministries. The same happened with some properties after the earthquake of 1976. And the state of Guatemala needs to register these properties under the name of the state and not under the number, name of agencies or ministries. Mr. Expert, so the property 169, is located in the right place. Yes. It is correctly registered and is correctly located. But we have the documents and then we have other documents for the same place. So we have an overlapping of the property of the state over the property of Mr. Carrillo. Yes. After the creation of the five properties in 1990, in 1990, they are 25 properties in total. But we see that there are registry failures and errors that are huge errors. Mm, commissioners, my presentation, this representation has ended its questionnaire. Now I would like to give the floor to the state so that they have 10 minutes to ask the questions for the case. Thank you. Mr. Expert, good afternoon. I have basically two questions. The first one, Do you know any ordinary trial of the deeds 24 and 22 and uh, claim for the state property and cancellation of the properties 99 and 200, deed 24 of 1989 and 22 from 1983? Yes, of course, and that was part of uh, my study as well. And we got to the conclusion and it admitted the vacation to vacate the 
legal affairs and the instruments, but it didn't admit the cancellation of the registries because they were not requested in a precise and clear way. So you or the Guatemalan state did not carry out the action of uh, the, the resource available. And in the last judgment where this action is uh, vacated, by the Constitutional Court. Thank you. Did you present the expert report within this uh, trial? No, I am doing it now, but in that trial, you didn't do it. Thank you, Mr. Expert. I do not have any more questions. Thank you. So we're going to pass on to the questions by the commission. I will ask the commissioner Arrachamena whether her, she has questions. Thank you, Madam Vice President. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Expert Roberto Gomez. You have the expertise on the uh, registry management and the complexity that this implies in terms of the norms, do you believe that in the legal norms of Guatemala, are there formula, formulas so as to be able to give an answer facing the complexity that this case presents for Mr. Carrillo, how do you assess the, Guatemal the Guatemalan law in that sense to obtain an answer? I am going to say this in two ways. And I am going to say it from the constitutional perspective. In 1985 constitution, in section 20, 230, the assembly drafted a constitutional clause regarding the general registration of the property. If we look at the previous uh, constitutions, they do not uh, consider this process and it says that the property registry should be organized so that in each region and in each department there is a register as there was in 1987. I am member of the public uh, registry of the property and after 10 years of having been in that office there was a bill that was approved in which the uh, files are indexed the first one was provided by Mexico, then Peru, and the third Guatemala, which, which comprehends from Guatemala to Costa Rica, and they do not have support from historical documents. Since this situation exists, this case I am studying stresses the need of what we are going to do as from April 1st this year as to the creation of this special unit so that there are there are no the there are no further overlapping or these situations which are adverse to any profit uh, owner and the people that possess the lands because we are in the land in a state when where the possession prevails and there is lots of interruption of situations and this complexity in terms of the property is uh, something that I always see in my work. I have been working for 15 years and I've been working for big projects such as the creation of the system of the train that goes from Mexico to Guatemala. So you can imagine what 
carrying out this project means when the in the first time we for the first time we are going to analyze the files so as to do a better exercise or analysis or in which situation we are so i think that is how the state will be able to fail to face this type of situation so as to avoid what mr tulio has to go through he is struggling for one hectare of uh, of a land and this was created for the creation of a colon of a colonia nobody thought that that place was going to be was going to value more or to cost more and the state of guatemala provides for these kinds of situations that for me are are in paper but they cannot reproduce uh, the state there is a judgment of uh, eduardo who talks about this type of law just one specification within the framework of what we are you were talking in terms of the legal framework a court a constitutional court answers to the petition of Mr. Carrillo, so do you believe that is there any formula so that the state can effectively enforce the judgment that Mr. Carrillo has in his favor for the return of his property? Is that possible? I think that he exhausted all the proceedings available within the legal framework and it got to the constitutional court not only once but three times so this situation i think that has to do with the political willingness of the guatemalan state of solving this situation of its free will the Guatemalan state has also had several civil and criminal actions and it has not assessed the property right of Mr. Tulio and it has, there is a property in which this the same state said, no, we cannot grant it and sometimes it doesn't get to that place if it could get to that place it could affect an x number of owners from the start of the 12th south avenue up to the valle of liberación in different owners that possess their properties at that place so the only thing that remains is to get to the international court so that they can answer to a proceeding. Thank you, Mr. Gomez. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Commissioner. I would like to ask Ms. Uh, Commissioner Piavesan whether she has questions. No further questions. Thank you. Commissioner Macaulay, do you have questions for the expert? Um, yes, 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 thank you, uh, Madam President. Um, Mr. Mr. Gomez Morales, um, can I just do a, a, a roundup? From what I understand from your statement as an expert, you are saying that the, the state of Guatemala um, when registering their, the land, 169, consumed uh, um, um, Mr. Collier's land, one hectare of land. But am I to understand that in Guatemala, um, the registry would have registered state-owned lands from the moment 
the register the, that register commenced. Uh, um, and would also have the registrations of personal or personally owned lands by private persons. And that each of these lands would normally have a plan. This is plans came into effect after 1934, I believe you said, because before that there were no plans. So is it possible that this occurred as a mistake? That the state put Miss Mr. Colio's land in with theirs, or was it done as an intentional act? Because they ought to have known what size their lands were. And then also, if I can just do my second question, is it you said something about there was some anomaly because some lands were registered in the names of ministries and not of the state, whereas it should they should be registered as owned by the state. Um, so what, what what did the registration of this land in question um, in the name of was it the state or a ministry? And if it's in the name of a ministry, is that irregular registration? Thank you. I'm going to try to answer because I'm hearing to the Spanish translation, the graphic representations in a registry, in a right registry are not his. So the Guatemalan state creates the registry up to the year 2005. And you can speak about graphic descriptions, but that doesn't mean that we do not have these graphic representation descriptions because the general file does have it. But in 1987, when the institution of the general registry of the property starts, having as a reference the law of Spain, which is a benchmark at a global level, we started well, but that information was not conveyed to those persons implied because in, at that time there were some registries. So we lost, lost lots of information which we can recover by including it in the property register. Until today, April 1st, we are going to carry out that proceeding. So, in the properties that are registered, there are goods that belong to the nation and to communities. There are goods that have, there are properties that have other ways of manifestation, such as the singular uh, property and the co-property. And we need a framework so that these kinds of situations do not repeat. I can tell you, since uh, I started working, the public and private institution, there are lots of properties. And that is why there's an armed conflict in, the, in this country. Yesterday, the Kaziki is an institution from the private sector, requests the observatory for the protection of private property because these kinds of situations are reiterating a lot. This is a particular case that has transcended to the international court. I cannot 
answer any longer because or probably you can repeat the second question i will try to repeat it okay thank you we will have the opportunity to to hand in more documents in writing thank you very much well we have already finished and we will go on to the allegations of the parties yes commissioner macaulay yes just one short question that i didn't understand um, the Mr. Trujillo, um, the, the victim, said in his evidence that when he went to look at the register of to see his, his registered title, that they refused to show him, let him look at the book. And that's when he had to get his lawyer, Mr. Poe, who then went to, to look at the book, at the register book. Is this usual that a person going to look at, at the register for his land title or description is refused the, the, the permission to, to see the book? Uh, okay. Me voy a hacer atraso o voy a hacer I, before that, I would like to tell you how the process was when you went to the General Register of Property. In the past, we have uh, books that were for consultation by the public. And uh, people could have access to them. But then, when you have ripped pages, those books are under the custody of the Secretary of the General Register of Property. And it is possible that he was not given access to the books because those books were under custody and not were with the other books. Y por lo tanto, entonces, tuvo and que acudir as a result, ante un he abogado para needed a lawyer to request an explanation no why he was not libro. shown at the book. That could be por la que no se le pudo the explanation why eh, he was not allowed to see the libro. books physically. Eh, en, en nuestros tiempos normales In de ahora lo hacemos times, a través de una biblioteca virtual we have a virtual library ninguno and tiene acceso a los libros mayores no los libros físicos person has access to physical books porque todos ya fueron indexados al sistema de registro all they were they were all entered into the register system since 1997 únicamente Thank you, Mr. Gracias. Expert. Now, we will continue with the allegations on the parties. Uh, we will start with the petitioner first. Thank you have you. 10 minutes. Thank you, Commissioner. This representation uh, concludes based on the evidence that we have the following. First, we have listened to the statement and to the position of suffering and the complaints of Mr. Uh, Carrillo Hernandez. He has been complaining for 20 years. In general terms, we have to conclude that the attitude of a Guatemalan citizen before illegal actions that occur by officials of the state of Guatemala. We need to be honest and to be transparent. And we should say that the current officials have nothing to do with what happened in the past. The officials uh, that acted in an anomal, uh, no, uh, in a irregular way were others, not these officials. If Jose Tulio Hernandez, he was asked if he uh, presented some writ of amparo. He presented a writ of amparo. The first was submitted and the direction of the national civil policy police was ordered to vacate the premises and we have a mechanism uh, according to which the lower court uh, made an investigation regarding the location of the police but the ministry of the interior and the director of the national civil police 
Piema Montes and Esperis, and they went to the Constitutional Court in person to request that they were not vacated from the premises. There is also a news, an article of the newspaper from Prensa Libre, and uh, the director said that when they arrived there, there was nothing on those premises. And this is similar to happen during the conquest of the Americas. When someone put a flag there or a symbol and no one was there, they believed that it was theirs. And in 2005, there is also the statement of the former director of the National Civil Police. And there is also a persecution process that derives from a forgery. But it should be said that the forgery of the public document uh, is uh, presented in 2015. And in the file presented before the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights, that there was a ruling by the public prosecutor office that includes the assessments of the public uh, deeds. And the public prosecutor uh, prosecution office said that the deeds were okay. Then the prosecutor requested the expert that participated and that work in the public prosecutor uh, office to change that decision. Once they change the judgment, they issue the capture order or the arrest order because before they don't have the a basis for the arrest. And in the civil proceeding uh, started by the state of Guatemala, the two experts that were there to determine the authenticity of the public deeds are members of the National Civil Police. And this is clear that obviously they have an interest, in, an interest because they were employees of the institution that was committing in the irregularity. So now they are in conflict. There is a conflict within the criminal proceeding. The expert said that one of the public deeds is not fake. And during the civil proceeding, the employees of the police said that both these are fake. Due to these irregularities that are, exist, and I give face that the current officials of the state did not participate in this. And unfortunately, the criminal persecution tries to condemn or to judge a person that, that did not participate in forgery facts. The documents presented before the system were presented in an adequate way. So Mr. Carrillo Hernandez has not been a powerful person to forge public documents or to create books or to take ownership of a property. The state of Guatemala did not comply with Article 25 and the case law of the Inter-American Court regarding the American Convention of Human Rights. The effectiveness of the writ of amparo in Guatemala does not exist. If you get, if a writ of amparo is admitted in Guatemala, the writ of amparo will not be res respected. And that's why we need to go to the international system because the writs of amparos or the decisions of amparo are not respected. And all the allegations against Mr. Carrillo are there not to comply with the decision of amparo. The state of Guatemala promoted several decisions of amparo and the last that they promoted was sold by the constitutional court who rejected it and the clarification and the extension that was presented was notified in february 24th of this year and was rejected so the question is to summarize a common citizen can change the whole system of justice, the whole system of property registry to take ownership of a property. 
the state went to set an office where they should not be. And that is political, the democratic willingness of a countries, and that the state and a government should be respectful of the property of its citizens. So we cannot continue thinking that the civil proceeding, which was nulled, and when the experts of that uh, proceeding are not impartial, we can continue with that proceeding. We find that the uh, judgments will not be complied with. It is sadly because uh, the, the proceeding says that the property was bought in dif at different points of time, but it's if the prosecutors uh, show the pages of the book, we see that former prosecutor bought in 1989 the property. So what are we talking about? the information and the page that includes different dates and there is no clarity about the documents. So as, with re respect of Mr. Uh, Carrillo Tulio, because of his level of education, he cannot alter the whole system of registers and justice. So this has reached all the limits of what a uh, judicial persecution could be. And we have presented all the documents. And in 2015, because of the orders of the prosecutors, the judgments were changed. So only a country that questions democracy can do that to alter the evidence, to alter the judgments. This is happening to Mr. Hernandez, but this could happen to any citizen of Guatemala. A judgment lasts 10 years and then it's changed. Um, that judgment was already in the files of the Inter-American Commission. You can verify this. The Public Prosecution Office did not take into consideration this. They requested for the judgment to be changed in order to persecute uh, Carrillo Hernandez. But the power of the state is the power of the states, and we can see it here. He ca it can do whatever they want. They can persecute a man. They can uh, vacate a property. They can uh, occupy a property. They can, they can trespass. And I think that we need to issue the merits reports and to send this proceeding to the American Court of Human Rights. Maybe there we can find a solution. And we know that many citizens are facing the same situation because the proceeding should be more effective. And this has been said by the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights. Thank you, Mr. Pop. I would like to give the floor to the allegations of the states for 10 minutes. Thank you, honorable members of the commission. We will uh, present our conclusions and we will make a presentation. Honorable commissioners, the representation of the state will show the reasons why the Inter-American Commission should reject the case 12895 and should issue a merits report by recommending not to send the case to the Inter-American Court of Human Rights because of the inadmissibility of the case. We as representatives of the state hope that this hearing does not make the commission a review a stage and that the documents or the resources were presented before the national courts and this cannot be solved by international at the international level so our conclusions are not based on on presumptions or conclusions but they are based on facts that are in the file that you have at your disposal you should 
as a state, you should take into consideration the following. In 2004, the petitioner presented a writ of amparo to request the vacation of the substation of the National Civil Police located on a lot that belongs to the state of Guatemala since 1950. He used documents that were not valid. He was, uh, he, uh, or her, his read was admitted in two instances, and the documents were annulled, but the documents or the deeds were supposed to be evidence of the legal affairs. And because of their uh, register, those, the register was not legal. But in the writ of Amparo, the Constitutional Court said that the judgment could not be executed or enforced because of the irregularities regarding the ownership or, of the property. The state started a civil proceeding to determine the um, dismissal or the uh, nullity of the deeds. In June 2006, we started a judicial proceeding in 1959 and 1983 for the claim of the state property and the cancellation of the registration of the property 199 and 200. In that process, it was shown that the 199 and 200 property duplicated or overlapped on the uh, property 165 and 169, which was a property of the state of Guatemala since 1950. And it was also shown that there, was there were irregularities in the deeds 24 and 22, which had purchase or actions for the declaration of uh, the vacation. This was notified to the parties within the proceedings. That is why Mr. Carrillo Hernandez on 2014 for the place where he dedicated for this event. He, since he did not challenge this, he consent to this resolution. Mr. Jose Tulio Carrillo Hernandez does not have and never had a property right for eight reasons. The first one, in 1950, the state bought this, the land called El Rosario, which belonged to Raul Figueroa Valle, and he it reserved the right to uh, have two blocks which were going to be delimited limited by the state. Such fragmented was fragmentation was done on April 8, 9, April 9th, 1960, and the property 31638 was created on page 208, book 596 of Guatemala through the, the deed in 1959, Mr. Raul Figueroa Valle supposedly sent the two blocks to his father-in-law. They evidenced the first inconsistency, which was evidenced in the trial, since he could not have sold in 1959 a property that he obtained for by demarcation until 1963. Mr. Raul Figueroa Valle, in opposition to what established in the deed, kept the property until 1972 when he celebrated an exchange contract instead of having sold in 1959, when he legally had no right, he kept over 12 years the property of the uh, for, in his favor, and they had been 
fragmented by the state as a consequence of a no trial Mr. Rogelio Rojas purportedly sold to Jose Tulio Carrillo Valles the two um, lots that were fragmented and this was written in the deed 22 authorized by Alvaro Reyes and its null nullity was shown in the trial fifth he could not have authorized the deed number 22 because in 1983 this notary public only authorized 20 public instruments according to what uh, is, is stipulated in the index of his protocol the first authorized deed is dated on November 8, 1983. So he, there cannot be public instrument nine, uh, number 22, ninth month before the public instrument number one. The protocol pages where the deed number 22 were bought until 19, 85 by the not free public. This means two years after the purported authorization of the instrument. It is important to stress that Mr. Rogelio Roca, father-in-law of the petitioner, died on April 25, 1983, two months after the supposed uh, sale, so he could not have signed a protocol page which acquired the notary public who, who was authorizing the contract until 1985. The properties could have not been registered in the, or in the book 200 from the year 1983 as it was made to believe to the, the court since the book two, 2066 was enabled by the court five years after that. The, the ordinary trial determined that among the deed number 22, there is an alteration and the numbers did not match the ones that identify the pages of the protocol. In 1990, the state of Guatemala unified 25 uh, properties, which were the property 1969, and its area was uh, replaced by 199 and 200 as a result of the claims presented by the petitioner. So this, is, this shows that the state exerted the uh, property over those territories. In 2004, Mr. Jose Tulio Carrillo through the writ of Amparo tried to uh, protect a property right that he did, not, he did not have. He leveraged the fact that the court assumed that the documents were uh, valid, but the court in mandated its actions and, and, and vacated the resolutions because it considered that there were doubts on the title, on the ownership of their rights. Uh, sorry, could you finish with your presentation because you have, uh, you run out of time. Thank you, Honorable Commission. We believe that this file has to be, this case has to be filed. We are showing through evidence and we say that there is no rejection of justice to the petitioner because as he demonstrated, he used 
all the instances within the, the judicial system. I would like to ask the state whether you can send us the presentation afterwards. Yes, of course. Thank you. Okay, so having finished with the allegations, I will ask my colleagues, commissioners, whether there is a question. I will start with Commissioner Rosemera, the country rapporteur. Thank you. Madam President, Commissioner, I would just like to say uh, how important it is for the Inter-American Commission, the uh, developing of this hearing. And we would like to ask to to have the elements that we that we, you could not expose today for our petition and case systems. And we would also like to put forward the relevance that our office has to ensure the justice to the parties, the purported victim in this case, and our responsibility as to the assessment of the elements presented by both parties. Thank you, Madam President. I will ask Commissioner Piovesan. Thank you, Madam President. I have no questions. I would also like to add to the words of Commissioner Esmeralda, the country reporter. Sorry, I was muted. Commissioner Margaret, I don't know if you want to reiterate your question. Um, <clears throat> I do, but I also have another question. Um, I would like to ask the state um, that they said in their um, submissions that um, the, the court um, in granting the Amparo to Mr. Corrido, um, acted on the basis that the documents, his documents were real, were authentic. And then several years later, they overturned that decision. Um, could the state um, tell us um, on what basis the court acted to overturn the decision? Um, and, and find that the documents which they had acted upon were no longer valid documents. And, and also, um, yes, um, had the state taken any steps after the adoption of our admissibility report in 2013 to comply with the 2004 Amparo Church? So we will have five minutes for each of the parties to uh, reply. I will uh, give the floor to the petitioner. So if you have any comments to make, thank you, Commissioner. Effectively, with regard to the question of Commissioner Margaret, the judgment was not overturned. The writ of Amparo from 2004 that was confirmed by the Constitutional Court in 2005 is still final. And is based on all the documents and actions in which the state participated and uh, favorably position. And there is also uh, some members of the National Civil Police Said, participated and said that the property was not theirs. And that judgment is final now. And that is the judgment that motivated the proceeding. And that judgment was not modified. There was only a change regarding the enforcement of the judgment when we, when uh, the Minister of the Interior was removed and the Director of the Police was removed because of not complying with the judgment. Because of the failure to comply with the constitutional order, the officials were removed. And the constitutional 
correct because of the order that I said, decided to uh, leave the sentence without effect, even though the, 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 the judgment couldn't be modified, it's final. But the effects of the judgment are not enforced. What they did is to initiate lower proceedings, a civil proceeding. And there are some issues and there are full of failures because those are the issues of the uh, register and the judicial system of the countries. And it's, that is not the responsibility of Mr. Carrillo Hernandez. The deeds, uh, they say that they are fake, but the wife of Mr. Carrillo Hernandez, uh, and, but we know that the state has many deeds. We have some cases from 1980, 81, 82, 84, and 84. They have a mess of deeds, but that doesn't mean that the deed is fake. In 2005, the public prosecutor office said that the deed was valid, but why they changed that later? Because of the petition of several officials, we cannot uh, avoid the truth. We do not need a comprehensive proceeding of full of case, laws, of case law to see. How is it possible that two employees of the police are the experts that determine that the deeds were not valid? It's impossible. The judge that said that the deeds were null also granted them a writ of amparo. How he could grant a writ of amparo if it was a lower court proceeding? Following those ideas, what we would like to say, if we take into consideration some situations, what has happened here cannot be erased. The state of Guatemala is not complying with the judgment or after with it's established by an Amparo decision. And that was that judgment was granted by a court of appeal and was confirmed by the constitutional court. So there's nothing else to say. There is a very specific situation here. The property belongs and those people that the state cannot confirm that they are the actual owners of the land, they can order experts to change the judgment, they can do that. You can see also the decision of, uh, in 2005 and then that decision was changed. We, we, the, the, the judgment is not overturned, it's final. And therefore we have a violations of article several articles of the American Convention of Human Rights and the property of the state is not there and is not in the register. It is created in a very regular way. And this could be discussed in any country around the world and in any register situation. Thank you very much. I would like to give five minutes to the state to close the hearing. Thank you, honorable commissioners. We need to be very clear about what is being discussed. There is a decision of Amparo that is sold because of an occupation that is reported and the judgment is not final because the location of the property of Mr. Carrillo Hernando has not been determined. Second, we need to take into consideration the fact that we are talking about an expert report regarding the location of the property, but we are also, we are providing documents that there was a trial to determine the truth of the documents or the validity of public deeds. We are not talking about measures. It's about the public deeds that 
led to the registry of a property and that it was determined that those public deeds were fake. And after those expert reports in that trial, there was no single expert report that was against the judgment. Honorable commissioners, we believe that we need to talk in clear terms. Pro uh, proceedings or judgments of our internal law cannot be reviewed because they are against uh, the petitioner or because the conclusion of that judgment is not that that the petitioner wanted. Here we have a criminal proceeding that determined that there is uh, fake deeds. The person was guaranteed the right to defense, to trial, and in due process, he is enjoying due process and he's enjoying freedom and he is even having this hearing. And what do we want to solve? Do we want to solve something that is still pending within our courts? We believe that this is not acceptable and therefore we request that this proceeding or this case is filed and that is not submitted before the Inter-American Court of Human Rights. Thank you, honorable commissioners. Thank you. I would like to thank both parties for participating, the petitioners and the representatives of the state. We value your uh, you being here. I would like also to remember that each of the parties have one month to send any information that they consider necessary uh, to the Inter-American Commission. I would like to thank first to my colleagues, the commissioners. I also, I would like to uh, thank Commissioner Margaret and Commissioner Flavia Piovesan and also to, especially to Commissioner Esmeralda Roseremena who is the country rapporteur. Thank you, Commissioner. I also would like to thank the uh, team of petitions and cases and the expert Analia Banfi and also Eric Cogunia and also all the members of the commission that are following. And we are here to promote and defend human rights. Thank you. And I will close now the hearing. Thank you and have a nice, a nice afternoon. Thank you. Goodbye, good afternoon. Thank you, good afternoon.